Vegans watch out. Apparently, plants cry like hormonal teenagers when they're stressed out. Seriously, when they're cut or overwatered, these guys are belting out Mariah Carey high-level distress signals. Luckily, only bats, mice, and a few other animals can eavesdrop on these ultrasonic plant dramas. Next thing you know, they'll be asking for extra hugs and therapy sessions. Wait, it gets even more dramatic. It also turns out that plants release gaseous chemicals when they're in danger. So, when you catch a whiff of freshly cut grass, it's actually farting and screaming to its buddies that a lawnmower is here. But hey, it's not all about tears and distress calls. Plants can also flirt. Yeah, you heard me right. Those flowers aren't just sitting pretty. Their appearance is their own personal Tinder profiles, wooing bees and butterflies passing by. Brings a new meaning to birds and bees. But when looks just aren't cutting it or the competition is off the charts, it's time to bring out the big guns. Scent. You've seen those guys with their pickup lines. Is it hot in here or is it just you? Or the girls who laugh louder than a bulldozer? Well, floral scent works pretty much the same way. Every flower has its own signature smell, trying to outdo the others and attract its favorite pollinator. Some pollinators are all about that sugary aroma of roses and lilies. But there are also those with, let's say, more unique tastes. We're talking about the ones who go wild for scents that mimic rotting flesh. We all have that friend, right? And when the target's in sight, well, it's time to offer up the sweet reward. I mean, pollen or nectar, of course. But let's take a step back and see how it all begins. To do this, we need to dive into the root of the matter. Trees and plants have a whole 24-7 communication system going on underground. It all starts with the big shots, the tallest and oldest trees in the forest. These giants soak up sunlight like it's their job, which, let's be real, it kinda is. Thus, they're producing more sugar than a candy factory before Halloween night. Finally, they end up with more sugar than they can handle, so they call up their underground pals, the mushrooms. These fungi cozy up in the roots of trees, just waiting for that sweet, sweet sugar. In exchange, they give the tree all the nutrients it needs from the soil. But these mushrooms aren't just there for food. They provide a full-on communication superhighway and spread messages by linking trees and plants in a web. A web that is constantly trading nutrients and information on what's happening in the area. It's like their own version of the internet. Let's call it the shroom net. And get this, when one's in trouble, it doesn't just suffer in silence. Nope, it sends out distress signals to its neighbors, warning them of the danger. Forget nosy Karen peeking through her blinds. Trees are the OG neighborhood, but that doesn't mean they can't stand alone. Plants are also survival experts, especially when it comes to weathering the cold. I mean, we've all got our layers of blubber and fancy coats. But trees? Their ability to survive winter would make the X-Men jealous. While we're bundled up like human burritos at least three months a year, some trees turn themselves into ice. Let me explain. When the temperature drops below freezing, the ice threatens to pierce through the tree's cells and kill it. Therefore, it activates a process called extracellular freezing. It forms ice not inside but between its cells, protecting the cell interiors from frosty doom. But here's the bad news. With great frostiness comes great thirst. So for those bone-chilling Arctic days, trees have this thing called supercooling. That's when water defies logic and stays liquid just to mess with Mother Nature's plants. In fact, it happens because the liquid becomes thicker as water is drawn from the cell. Extracellular freezing, remember? So it leaves behind a thicker concentration of sugar. You know the maple syrup you love to shower your pancakes with? That's it. When temperatures plummet as cold as your ex's heart and get lower than negative 40 degrees, supercooling backfires, and this is very much a death sentence. However, there are plenty of trees that can survive even being submerged in, you know, liquid nitrogen or liquid helium, and this is when they turn into ice. They activate a process known as ventrification. It's kind of suspended animation where molecules don't really move. So basically, they turn themselves into ice to survive. Like, who needs warmth when you can just chill out? And it's not just the cold that plants have figured out. They've also got a few hacks for surviving in the desert. They extract up to 90% of their fluids from crystallized water trapped in rocks. Yep, you heard it right. They're sipping on rock cocktails. No umbrella needed. 
But despite their incredible survival skill, the coziest place for plants is still your windowsill. Sure, those leafy companions know how to brighten up our living spaces, but let's be real. They're not exactly the air-cleaning champs we've been led to believe. They're cute and green, but they're more style than substance. You'd need a jungle's worth of plants just to match the air quality of your backyard. So enjoy your house plants for what they are. Beautiful, calming companions and potential light bulbs. What? Oh, you didn't know? Scientists are now working on plants that emit bioluminescent light like they've been sipping on some radioactive Gatorade. By embedding specialized nanoparticles into plant leaves, they've induced plants to emit dim light for hours. So yep, soon you're gonna live in a world where instead of flipping on a switch, you're gonna use your own vegan light bulbs. What a bright idea, literally.